Hi, it's Jamie with It Works 3D, showing you how to change the nozzle and heat brake on E3D Titan or Titan Arrow hot end. In this case, installed on one of our E3D Titan Arrow tool heads for Lulzbot Taz. The tools you'll need are a 17 or 16 millimeter open-ended wrench, a 7 millimeter open-ended or box-end wrench, uh, for our tool head a 2 millimeter hex wrench and a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. To get at the hot end on our tool head, you need to remove the filament cooling duct, which is held in place with three millimeter screws that take a two millimeter hex wrench. So, screw one. And then screw two on the other side here. You can move these cables out of the way. There's slack on them to remove them. This tool head actually has already been upgraded. That's a service that we offer. Um, it had had the special Micro Swiss uh, wear resistant nozzle and titanium heat brake that E3D makes installed. And I thought I'd show you how that process works. So now I'm just going to take the filament cooling duct and just kind of tilt it out of the way. Uh, it's enough cable to get it completely out of your way here. We'll then remove the silicone heater. Uh, boot on there which prevents filament buildup and then I'm going to take my two millimeter wrench and loosen the screw that retains the heater and just push it out. Sometimes you need to put a, a knife or something in here and, and kind of wrench this loose. This is aluminum so it's pretty easy to bend. I'm going to take my 1.5 millimeter hex wrench and loosen the screw that retains the thermistor and push it out. Sometimes a little bit of force is needed. Might not have that screw totally loosened here. Might need a better hex wrench. This one's probably a little worn. There we go. All right, at this point, what I usually suggest is, if you can, uh, preheat the tool head to 250 or so, um, but then you're working with hot stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try and do this cold. So what I'll usually do is place the wrench on here and just loosen. And what's usually going to happen is the heat brake, uh, heater, and uh, or the heat brake block and um, nozzle are all coming out together. In this case, I happen to have gotten uh, the nozzle and block off together uh, with the heat brake remaining in there. Often the heat brake will come out with this instead because. Uh, having a good tight junction between the face of the heat brake here and the nozzle is really important once it's heat tightened. I've already broken this one loose, so that's why it came apart how it did. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the nozzle from the heater block. Now if, the, um, if they come out together with the heat brake in here, which is handy if you're changing it, what I'll usually do is then put a wrench on here, put a wrench on the block, and break the nozzle loose, and that'll often uh, break the nozzle loose from the heat break inside of here. One thing that's important to remember is that uh, the a lot of people are concerned about getting this, the face of the, uh, the nozzle, flat on the face of the block, and that's nowhere near as important. If there's a little gap right here, that's okay. Um, there, you can see that gap better. Uh, the important part is the heat break and the nozzle being butted up against each other tightly within the block. And you'll see how you do that in just a second. Uh, from here, you can um, use a wrench with a rag wrapped around it, usually uh, is enough uh, to clamp down and break the heat break loose. Uh, worst case, if you have a broken one, a screw extractor in the end will get it out. But uh, this one's snug in there. This is one of the 1.75 millimeter titanium heat breaks that E3D makes for maximum wear resistance. What I'll do uh, usually then is um, tighten the nozzle finger tight all the way down onto the face of the block here so that it is flat against there. There, nice and flat, finger tight. And I will then place the block on the heat brake, being careful not to cross thread it and tighten it up on there 
until it snugs up against the heat break. And this is all just kind of hand tight at this point. Now, if you don't need to uh, clock it, in other words, orient the block in a different direction, you're done at this point. You could just reinsert your heater cartridge, your thermistor, and go. Uh, but on our tight and narrow tool heads, because of the way the, uh, the fan shroud is, we need to clock this. And the way you do that is um, I will take the seven millimeter wrench, place it on here and loosen, and then I'm just gently turning, loosening the nozzle as I'm turning the heater block and I need it to finish about a 30-second of a turn. I just need it to be snug here, about a 30-second of a turn from perfectly square. See how it needs to go clockwise about another 30-second of a turn? We're going to do that uh, with it heated on the machine, but that's how you uh, replace a nozzle and heat brake on the E3D V6 hot end um, and then clock it. You'll notice that that loosening did cause a little gap between the uh, the nozzle and the block. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't hurt performance uh, significantly. Uh, you just want to minimize that gap by snugging it up and then clocking it the rest of the way. I'll go ahead and reinsert the heater. In our case we have to leave a little bit of a gap right there to line it up. Tighten up the hex screw there, reinsert the thermistor, tighten it up with our hex wrench, and then I'm not going to put the uh, fan duct back on because your next step is to heat it up to 280C on the machine and then finish making that final 30 second of a turn to finish clocking it and tightening it while it's heated to 280. On this case, to get the tightening done, you'll put the 17 mil wrench across it here. You just need to be very careful not to short the heater's resistor leads to the block with the wrench because that can damage your machine. But you would finish the procedure. I'll usually have both wrenches on there and I'll finish tightening with the 7 mil until the block is to the position I want it. Thanks and uh, appreciate you watching and visit itworks3d.com for more information and some of these products for your Lulzbot Taz Mini and uh, E3D Titan Arrows. Thank you very much.